And welcome back to another episode of Andrew Rants, the video series where I stand upon my metaphorical soapbox pedestal of the world and I pitch and complain about things that annoy me, bother me, piss me off, and just play and make me want to scream until my head comes off. Ah, uh, yes. And what is it today, you ask, that's got me so annoyed and angered? Well, it's actually something that I've sort of ranted about in the past. Well, let me rephrase that. I mentioned it in another rant, and somebody actually suggested I should do it as an actual video. <laughs> Why not? What the hell? So today, I'm ranting about time travel movies. Oh, oh, before I get into this, no, I'm not an expert in time travel. Do I understand it? To a point, like most people. Do I believe it's possible? Yes, given the correct circumstances and everything else. I do. Does that mean I want to try it? <laughs> you bet your ass. I'd love to get some winning lottery numbers. But that's beside the point. Now, this entire video idea came about because of my Teen Titans Go video. Or one of my many Teen Titans Go videos. Let's face it. Teen Titans blows, all right? <laughs> hey, look. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah. It's not the original Teen Titans. No, no. It's Teen Titans blows. Yeah. The original Teen Titans or the OG Teen Titans are good. Teen Titans blows? Yeah, no, those are the uh, crappy knockoffs. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I talked about their movie that came out that, honestly, I never planned to really watch. And so many people got suckered into seeing it because they dangled season six of the original Teen Titans in our face as sort of the hook, line, and sucker to get people into the theaters to see this when it came out, and I didn't fall for it. Again, not a lot of other people did either. It didn't do very well opening weekend, so. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> anyway, in that movie, Robin had this brilliant idea to travel back in time and basically cease to exist all the other superheroes so that they would be the only heroes left so they could get their own hero movie. And in that video, I pointed out the massive amount of flaws in that plan's logic. For starters, without... Batman, there would be no Robin. Without, you know, the Doom Patrol, there would be no Beast Boy. And Cyborg, depending on which version of Doom Patrol you actually watch and or believe in. Without, you know, superheroes, there would have been no need for Cyborg because he would have just, well, probably died. His father wouldn't have had the brilliant idea to save him and he wouldn't have gone off to be a superhero. Or he might have just lived his life as a normal human, but who the hell knows. I kind of think the advancement of superpowers and the superheroes kind of helped to give Cyborg his powers. So I'm going to chalk that up into that as well. <clears throat> Raven and Starfire were the two wild cards in that because I figured Starfire would have just came from Tamarine, from Tamarania and just you know, nuked everybody and took control of the Earth, and probably had an all-out fight with Raven after Trigog took her ass over. So, yeah, it's sort of uh, in between. Those are the two wild cards, but either way, they wouldn't be heroes. They'd be more or less villains or just world conquerors. <clears throat> but Teen Titans Go to the Movies wasn't the only um, time travel movie that really gets stuff wrong. Now, I'm not going to go into certain ones because... There are some time travel movies that even I will not touch. The Notebook and The Lake House are two of those fucking things. Never in this world! Especially The Lake House. Not in this lifetime or any other! But there was a movie, uh, Back to the Future, uh, it was a trilogy. And Back to the Future Part 1 and 2 are actually the best. Back to the Future Part 3 can suck it. I'll explain why in a minute. But the original Back to the Future movie basically had Marty going back to 1955 from 1985, interacting with his parents who were then high school students at the time, and altering the course of events of the history. Now that is the interesting point. Uh, Doc Brown had pointed this out not only in that movie, but in the second movie as well. And he, did, he pointed it out, like, very, very briefly in the first movie. It's why a lot of people probably don't remember it. But basically, if you go into the past 
and you affect anything in the past, it alters the future. The slightest, slightest hiccup in the past fucks up the future tremendously. It's time travel 101. If you go back into the past, you do not disturb anything. That's one of the main reasons why when it comes to fixed points in time, you can't go back in time and stop a fixed point. Pompey's eruption, Lincoln's assassination, certain events have to forego the same ordeal. And time travel movies understand that as well. You can't change key events in the past. You can't go back to the past and let's say, oh, I want to stop the dinosaurs from being wiped out. Nope, has to happen. It's a fixed point in time. So, in the first movie, Marty goes back to the past by accident and accidentally gives his father the courage that he never actually had to punch the crap out of Biff and change his own destiny. So, technically, he didn't really alter things for the worse. He just brought out the courage that his father already had in him to, you know, make it more to the... No, to the foreground, basically. But as Doc Brown explained it, like I said, any event you change in the past, any slight alteration affects the future. So because Marty did that, it changed the future. So when he went back to 1985, his dad was a successful writer. His mom was successful in whatever she did. The rest of the family was successful. His brother wasn't working at a really crappy uh, burger joint. His sister wasn't screwing around. Uh, they weren't dealing with, you know alcoholism that his mom was dealing with. You know, they were happy. Marty had a new truck. And all that stuff happened because he basically gave his father the confidence because he had a plan in mind to, oh, well, you know, you're going to come beat the crap out of me and take, you know, mom as your, you know, date. Well, that didn't work because Biff ended up intervening and thus caused the confrontation. So there was that. In part two... Because old Biff went to the past with the almanac, that skewed the future again. But Marty had to go back in time and change that, which brings the second point. Which is, this is a thing that time travel actually gets right in these movies, is that if you undo or you change back the event from, you know, that was altered, you will restore the timeline. That is actually true. In Marty's case, it was go back to 1955, burn the sports almanac... That'll prevent Biff from ever knowing the future events. He can't make his millions. He can't legalize gambling. He can't do all the stuff that he did. And, well, Hilldale basically doesn't become a shithole. It doesn't become Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. You know, perish the thought. <laughs> Sorry about that. I have allergies. Anyway, because of that, he alters the timeline again. But this time for the better. Now, when it comes to the third movie... Honestly, I just threw my hands up in the air and said, fuck it. Because anything he was changing at that point in time automatically screwed the timeline. They basically were supposed to not save the teacher that was supposed to go over the cliff and die. Because the cliff was named after her because she died on the cliff. So that didn't happen. So therefore, they were messy with forces far beyond their ken. Yeah. It's, uh, I'm not going to lie, very, very, very complicated. But what time travel movies get wrong is when they want to basically spit in the face of time travel itself. Now, take the movie, literally, The Time Machine. Uh, I'm going to go with the remake over the original because I only saw bits and pieces of the original and I like the remake a lot better because Guy Pierce actually did a very good job in that movie. That was basically, he went back, he went into the future to try to get an answer to a question. That question was, why can't one change the past? And it took him to the end of the world almost to find out why. Because he built his machine in order to prevent that from happening. Because his girlfriend that he wanted to marry died, he built the time machine. Because of her death, he decided to go back in time to prevent it and change it. But because that didn't happen, because it didn't work, he kept going forward to find an answer. 
When he got the answer that if he would have succeeded, he would have never built his machine, there's the answer. Without point A from happening, point B would have never existed. Therefore, it was a fixed moment in time he could not change. Her death was locked in at that exact moment. So there is that. But when time travel movies get wrong, like I said with the Teen Titans Go movie, is when you want to go back in time to alter history to benefit you, but instead you're erasing your own existence. That's like going back in time and, let's say, murdering your father, therefore not allowing you to exist. In order to rectify this, you would have to become your own father. It's a paradox. And that's what Robin wants to make. And the movies don't do paradoxes right. At, at fucking all, they don't get paradoxes right. When it comes to a paradox with time travel movies, there's a magnitude of paradoxes. There's the bootstrap paradox. There's the grandfather paradox. There's so many of them that you can literally just look them up. But basically, uh, the bootstrap paradox is where you know of a past figure in history. Like, let's say, um, oh, I, I don't want to use the Doctor Who one here. Um, let me think of a good one here. Um, Walt Disney. Let's go with Walt Disney. Who the hell? What the hell? Let's go with Walt Disney. So let's say <clears throat> you want to go back in time and shake the man's hand that created Mickey Mouse. You know, you want to go back in time before Disney became the massive conglomerate superpower that apparently the copyright law on Mickey Mouse only extends until 2024. I found out today. Thank you, Death Battle. And let's say you want to go back in time and meet Walt Disney himself. You want to shake his hand. You want to tell him, hey, look, you are doing a wonderful job. I love what Disney can do. Excuse me for a second. I got to go gargle. Okay, I'm back. I had to pause there so I could gargle that crap out of my mouth. Hold on, I still don't think it's out. Uh, Alright, now it's better. Anyway, you want to go back in time uh, to basically tell Walt Disney, hey, you've done a great job. But you can't find him. Nobody's ever heard of him. But yet you know everything that he's done. You know everything that has led up to his death. You know every single thing he's done, period. Every moment of his life. Or every massive event. So you become him. You become Walt Disney. That's the bootstrap paradox. <clears throat> That's it. That's the bootstrap paradox. The grandfather paradox I already explained. You basically... It, well, it works for your father too. But basically you accidentally kill your past self. Either your father or your grandfather. Usually your grandfather. And... You essentially have to become your own grandfather or your own father because, dun, 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 you ended up killing dear old dad or dear old grandpa in the past. So because now you're going to cease to exist, that's going to cause an issue. They actually touched upon this in the Back to the Future movie where Marty had a picture of his brother and his sister and himself outside, I think it was their home, and they were starting to fade because he interrupted the moment when his parents met. Because of that, he altered history. He was creating a paradox. Him fixing said paradox was giving his dad the confidence to stand up for his goddamn self, which honestly, I think any nerd back in the 80s was like one wedgie away from total meltdown, trust me. But yeah, that basically fixed the paradox. It had to be fixed it for the better, so there is that. However, paradoxes, like I said, are something that movies never get right whenever they do time travel. Oh, we can fix this paradox by just doing this small little whatever the hell you want to call it problem. There's actually a movie called Time Cop that proves this. When he comes back from the one mission... Everything in the past, you know, everything in his time is royally fucked up. And now all of a sudden it's, whoa, great, this is bad. Oh, no, oh, shit, this is horrible. No, 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 this is all wrong. And he goes for one more time to try to fix everything. Hey, granted, okay, well, it's the plot movie, he succeeds. But paradoxes are something that they never get right. And it's always the, oh, well, we've changed one thing in the past. Well, 
unless that one massive event is going to have a massive ripple, it might not entirely change everything. Like, if I were to go back in time and walk on grass, that doesn't necessarily mean that 40, 50 years from now, apes are going to be ruling the planet. That just means that I stepped on something that wasn't stepped on before, but it's still technically there. It would have been stepped on at some point. You're not creating a paradox, you've created an alternate reality. And that is where time travel movies start skewing and screwing themselves over. It's not a paradox, it's an alternate reality. In that case, you don't have, quote-unquote, oh, well, this is a paradox. No, you've created an alternate reality. That's all you've done. You just can't fix what you've done. That's not altering the time stream. That's altering reality. You've created an alternate reality. Back to the Future has done that. The Time, still time Cop has done that. Freaking Robin and Teen Titans. When Teen Titans go to the movies, no, no, he didn't want to create an alternate reality. He wanted to flat out screw reality. Then again, that entire show screws reality, so that's par for the course. But still, you get my point. That's where I stand when it comes with this. Now, I have no beef, no adorations towards anything. I'm perfectly fine with my understanding of time travel. But still, it has its limits. It has its place. God knows it oversteps it sometimes. But still... It's a welcome change. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Do you think time travel movies ever get stuff actually right? Or do they actually just fuck it up left and right? Who knows? Let me know what your comments are. And let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. And until next time, I'm Andrew Rhodes, and this has been Andrew Rance. A mild Andrew Rance. What? I can't be a raving lunatic all the time.